back here in, uh, at 1 o'clock. Uh, first stop will be in about 40, 40 minutes, 4-0, four okay? Yeah. So on the way, we're going to discover a lot of lovely places. So you're here in Set, the port of Set. To the left is Mount Saint Clair. If you have the opportunity this afternoon to uh, take a look at Set, it's a lovely fishing uh, port. Well, not only, but there's a, uh, canals. Well, here's the commercial port of Set, but the, the very um, center of Set is just lovely, and the view is unbelievable from the top of the hill over there. There are um, many places to uh, to visit in, in Set. Um, Set is, um, is an important port. It's not as big as Marseille, of course. It's much smaller than Marseille. But this is an important uh, place when it comes to well, fishing and the third largest port of commerce, French one, on the Mediterranean Sea. A lot of imports here. So I have the list of all the goods we import here in Set, which uh, come from all around the world. So it's going to be easier for me to list them and just forget sometimes countries. So we import uh, grains, well, cereals from Ukraine and Russia. We also import some, you know, wines, even if we're the largest wine producing area of. Um, well, not only France, but the world, uh, from here all the way down to Spain. We import also wood from um, Western Africa, um, some uh, paper uh, from Brazil and Chile, granite from Brazil. Um, we also import, uh, you know, the windmills here, like what you can see here to the left is imported from Spain, Holland, and Denmark. We also import charcoal from Colombia, well, soya from Brazil and India, some uh, cars from Korea, Romania, Spain, well, canola from Australia, and, uh, well, petrol, gas from Qatar, from the US, well. We export cattle here from here to Northern Africa. Uh, some new, I mean, brand new cars, I think the brand is Renault to Algeria. Um, sodium bicarbonate we export to Spain, cereals, it's funny we import cereals and we also export some to Northern Africa and um, and that's about it, cars and mostly uh, cars and cereals and some uh, also construction materials, some you will see exotic wood we also import from, uh, from um, Africa. So many, um, also many mm, big ships uh, to cross the Mediterranean Sea and uh, connections from here to Morocco and Africa, uh, and sorry, Algeria, Northern Africa. Um, the fishing port is what you will see um, if you explore downtown Set. There are a lot of uh, trawlers and uh, say tuna signer. Uh, tuna is fished from here. Um, and usually and, uh, the fishing season is very short when it comes to tuna as uh, there are not so many what we call uh, well, tuna signer, <coughs> signers here in set and they only allow 150 tons of tuna so within a month they fished uh, the quotas. So where else is fish? Not only tuna, well there are less and less what we call blue fish or oily fish, sardine but there are still fish in the uh, in the area of uh, here set or further away of course up by the shore um uh, sea breams uh, soles um well and also bass voila so all together more than uh, eight on good years eight thousand tons of fish So we're leaving Set. Set is behind us. Uh, Set is famous also for, uh, if you have the opportunity to taste it, the squid pie, which is la tielle de Set, uh, which is made with, uh, well, maybe it's too early to talk about food, but as you know, French people are obsessed with food. Uh, so 
it's a it's a pie made with very tiny pieces of squid and a tomato sauce. It's a recipe actually imported from Italy, as there have been here a lot of Italian migrants, especially back in the 19th century. One of them was a famous, became a famous singer. Uh, his mother was from uh, the area of Naples. A lot of them, uh, a lot of the Italians who settled down here were from Naples. And, uh, well, this uh, famous singer was Georges Brassens. Georges Brassens was famous back in the 1950s until the 1980s. Uh, um, one of the great French singers. And he uh, had lived uh, long, uh, well, most of his life in Set, between Set and Paris. And, uh, well, this place is also, uh, has also a museum dedicated to uh, this famous French singer, Georges Brassens. Um, there are also many museums um, um, in, to discover in, uh, in Set. Uh, this is uh, a very attractive place, very, uh, but not uh, as big as Marseille, if you would ever stop in Marseille. Uh, this is much quieter and uh, much smaller, but very uh, picturesque, very, uh, very interesting place. So um, there are always a lot of traffic jams because to access the, the very center of set uh, is quite uh, it's quite difficult actually. Um, as you know, uh, the, I don't know if you've heard of the yellow um, what do call yellow cardigans, which are the gilets jaunes. Um, well, there are people protesting against well many things, especially against the increase of uh, uh, gas yes. price. Huh? prices so some of them are blocking the roads well i don't know in set but um i live in montpellier where i had the difficulties to drive to set this morning but uh well it happens that uh, well, uh, they they've blocked many places especially refineries and supermarkets so we want to have the opportunities to see supermarkets uh, this this morning, well, in Montpellier, uh, unless some of you want to have some free time and um, not follow the entire walking tour, but you will see that in supermarkets there are a lot of empty shelves because they're blocking also the access of supermarkets or uh, warehouses. So this is, um, well, getting problematic, let's say. So a lot of people uh, um, join uh, the, these groups and... Uh, would like the government well to do something about especially the gas prices but uh, the government is not reacting this is why you can also see a lot of speed raiders speed um, raiders just being uh, covered with blankets because uh, well i didn't have to pay this morning i didn't have to pay the, um, the toll at the well outside well when i when i exited the highway well, they had blocked and, well, took a ticket but didn't have to pay. So that's the good thing about um, <laughs> about <laughs> this gathering. But they're blocking and they're, indeed, well, a lot of people are, are a bit annoyed because every day going to work is uh, it's very difficult. Some factories uh, uh, have had to, uh, uh, to close down. Um, so yeah. this is... Uh, I hope we won't be blocked, but we shouldn't because we checked with our driver, with Frédéric, uh, the, the road, well, the, the access to uh, Montpellier, so it should be a problem. So to the left, uh, our, um, this is where petrol is, uh, they're not refineries, but this is where petrol is, uh, or gas is uh, stored. Um, and But they blocked these, um, they're called yellow gilets jaunes, uh, yellow cardigans have blocked um, many um, um, gas stations, so uh, it's also a problem for some uh, people to get some gas petrol. Anyway, there are always strikes in France, so always um, there's always something going on. Well, the last big strikes were in May, last May, and uh, the train um, SNCF company, I can't remember, what it was for, well, anyway, it was just another reason. But there's always a good reason to protest, so usually because of the, well, not uh, the decrease of salaries, well, not decrease, but, um, or more, well, longer working hours and, uh, yeah, or working conditions, but, well, for the time being, 
Well, let's talk about pleasant things. So you uh, you can see here a lot of ponds uh, by the sea. So um, there are also canals. This is in this area where uh, oysters and mussels are grown. Mm. More on the other side, um, insects. There's a very, very large pond, Bassin de Tau, where oysters and mostly, uh, most, mostly oysters and uh, mussels are reared. So, um, um, yeah, we also have oysters. Even if there's no tide, well, hardly no tide, well, there are methods to uh, recreate uh, just fake tides and uh, in order to grow mussels and uh, they're put on tables which are uh, twisted, well, put in the sea and then outside of the, out of the sea just to recreate uh, the tide. And they're very good oysters, actually. Um, the thing is uh, that they're um, they're not as salty as uh, say um, uh, as the the ones coming from the ocean. The taste is is much sweeter. It's, it's quite different from uh, the ones uh, the oysters coming from the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, but they're also very good tools. And so there's uh, there are a lot of um, also uh, very good restaurants in Sens serving the the local uh, fish and. Uh, shellfish. So this is here a protected area. All the ponds, uh, well, some are, are just, um, well, just a natural reservation for, uh, for birds and for different species. We're very close to the sea, obviously. Um, you start seeing a lot of vineyards. And there, uh, this is from here in Nîmes, Montpellier, all the way down to Spain, the largest wine producing area of the world. Only vineyards and different, so many different types of wine, of wines, well, red, well, rosé, of course, and white wines, but different, a lot of different grape varieties. Here, as for red, uh, it's usually, uh, if you buy local wines, it would be usually Shiraz, Mourvedre, Carignan, and Grenache. When it comes to white, the list is just so too, well, it's just too long. Uh, well, but in this area, it's mostly Muscat. You will see Muscat de Fontignan, so dry Muscat or, uh, or sweet Muscat. But there exist so many different types of wines, it's just unbelievable. And the most famous one near Montpellier, interested in buying wine, I know you're not maybe allowed to drink it on the ship, but you can get the bottle back at the end of the cruise. Uh, yeah, I would recommend Pic Saint Loup. This is the name of the, the main mount that can be seen uh, from Montpellier. Pic Saint Loup. Pic means a uh, high, well, high mount. It's six, well, it's not very high actually, but um, 650. Uh, meters high, I should check in feet, well, I will tell you later, but it's not, you will, we will see it from Montpellier, and this is uh, a very famous red wine, very famous appellation. The thing is that wines in this area are not as reputed as the wines, the other French wines, you know, the Bordeaux wines, or the Côte du Rhône wines, or the Burgundy wines, and here Languedoc-Roussillon area is where, still, are very cheap, well, jug wines are made, but now, since a few decades, this is also where excellent reds, rosé, and whites are made. They're not as reputed, so the price is not, the price is usually not that high, and you can have excellent ones for uh, less than 10 euros, which is not exactly the same when it comes to Côte du Rhône or Burgundy wines, which are the most expensive French wines, not to mention, well, also Champagne, Champagne area. So, um, a new Eldorado for investors. And more and more, it's very hot here, it's a Mediterranean weather, Mediterranean vegetation. Around the vineyards, you can see a lot, as you've seen, maybe, well, you must have seen already, a lot of um, pine trees, a lot of cypress trees and all the trees you can see to the left, uh, the dark ones, the not very high, are Mediterranean, Mediterranean oak trees with very tiny leaves, tiny dark 
green leaves. Well, I guess they, they, they can also be seen the same type of vegetation, well, nearly the same time, not exactly, but in California or uh, places that uh, have a very uh, similar climate in the US. So here, uh, mostly uh, here what you can see along the road are Mediterranean oak trees. The, the leaves are very small. They're very resistant to uh, hot weather, to hot weather, to strong winds, and um, usually very rocky uh, soils. Yeah, it looks rocky. Mm. So a lot of people spend their holidays in France, or well, French people, but not only. A lot of foreigners coming from mostly Germany, the Netherlands, the UK, uh, come here to spend the holidays by the sea and very close to the mounts you can see on the left and this is the very, this, they're not the Pyrenees here, they're not the Alps, this is the very southern part of Massif Central. As you may know, in the middle of France is a very big volcanic area and the very uh, southern mounts of this volcanic area are the mounts you can see here to the left and that we will see from Montpellier. So the touristic season is of course from very high times here. The high season is between May and September. We start having visitors usually from the end of March until well, early November, sometimes until December. It's very sunny. Mediterranean, Mediterranean weather, more than 300 days of sunshine a year. Nice. The thing is that um, what's the difference between here and Provence, or the French Riviera, which is further east of here, is that it's windier. It's windier. It usually uh, can be, especially in the winter month, uh, winter and <coughs> early spring, late autumn, winter and early spring can be very windy times. But this is also what allows uh, uh, us to have plenty of sunshine. So here the wind comes from the Pyrenees a bit, uh, Tramontane. We also have wind. And we also have wind coming from the Rhone River, which is further east. The Mistral wind, which blows down the river Rhone. Um, so yeah. Um, here can be windy, Montpellier not so much, but further west, west of Set, is usually a very windy area. So we'll have the opportunity to taste wine at Flaugergue. Flaugergue is the name of um, a wine estate, name also of the castle we will visit. The family is... Uh, um, the family will, they will explain you what uh, their ancestor, who their ancestor was, a very uh, famous man who was the Minister of Finance under the reign of Louis XIV, the Sun King who had Versailles built near Paris. So they're very uh, proud of their illustrious, very famous ancestor, Colbert. And um, this is, well, they for generations, they've, uh, they've lived in Flaugergue. Flaugergue used to be a wine estate outside of Montpellier, but as Montpellier has grown of importance and has grown as a very big place, well, bit by bit, they lost a lot of their, were forced to sell the, their, their vineyards to the city, but they've kept a good part of it and the castle that we will visit. So Montpellier is the seventh largest French city and what we'll concentrate on later on is the old town. The old town is the widest, well the biggest pedestrian center of uh, France. Uh, there are a lot of old buildings dating back from the Middle Ages and a lot of private mansions from the 17th and 18th century. It's a lovely place and uh, it's a very attractive city because of its location. It's by the sea, it's big, there are a lot 
of universities and the oldest university of medicine and law. So especially medicine is reputed for agronomy these days, mostly medicine, and there are a lot of research labs, a lot of very good um, hospitals and very good uh, doctors. So it's by the sea, the nearest sea resorts are some 10 miles, not even away from uh, from Montpellier. There are lots of hiking paths and vineyards north in uh, the very uh, uh, southern part of Massif Central, Les Cévennes. Um, this is the name of the Mount Range. Um, there are a lot of farms around here um, producing fruits and vegetables. We have you won't see much cattle here. Um, uh, there used to be many sheep in the past, reared for their meat, but also their wool. Well, this is the prison here, the jail of Montpellier. <laughs> cheapest accommodation here. Uh, so, yeah. On the way, we will see um, some uh, oh, nice and less nice parts. Anyway. Um, so yeah, a very attractive place here, a very fast growing uh, city, still very quiet um, well, when it comes to uh, delinquents and uh, uh, well, just, you know, um, just uh, we're, we're passing the prison, the jail, well this is, this is not as bad, it doesn't have the reputation of Marseille, even if Marseille is uh, well, it can be a rough place, but also it's very beautiful and uh, well, it's a big city.